Hi. Let's make some things clear about race. Race was originally used, as I was reading today on Wikipedia, to denote speakers of different languages. And then as time went on, it began to be used to describe similar physical characteristics. In the 17th century, it began to refer to physical characteristics which we now know are due to phenotypes or the expression of genotypes. Genes are expressed in an organism in features and the different features are phenotypes. A phenotype is a feature that has a purpose, generally. Scientists generally uh, disagree about these essentialist ways of categorizing human beings. And sometimes they still use these to describe perceived traits. But they consider biological essentialism, which is what this is, making essential determinations based on appearance or features, as obsolete. And the reason for that is the deeper we go into each population, the more we find out that they're not distinctly different from other populations. You could see a person who you think is black and find out that he has phenotypes and, of course, blood history and DNA that reflects different groups of people. Well, you might say, but he still looks this way. Sure, but it has nothing to do with his behavior unless he has an illness based on his phenotypes. Okay? Our problems socially and politically and religiously stem from this erroneous or incorrect practice of grouping together cultural groups and practices with the way the people in those cultural groups appear. Now, it might make some sense, if you have no time, to say that man with that kind of dress, speaking that language and that color, might be part of this group, and so he might honor these practices. But that's no way to make a distinction when you're making decisions politically or martially with police and soldiers. That's no way to make political decisions, okay? This is what people refer to as racism, but they shouldn't. We shouldn't use the word racism because what racism does is it validates, it gives credence to the idea that the way somebody looks is necessarily connected to the way he or she acts, and this is wrong because it's proven to be wrong. For example, I've had friends jokingly Korean-American friends call me cracker, and I laugh because it means I'm a white man. Specifically, it means I'm a racist white man or a white man who is ethnophobic or ethnocentric or xenophobic, but I'm none of those things. But I laugh because he's a friend and he's making a joke. When you make that distinction, oh, this person is this color, and you don't think that you should look deeper into my politics, my personality, for anything other than a quick decision of etiquette, if you make that quick decision because I am white-skinned, right, you're going to make a lot of errors right off the bat. First of all, it says nothing about my economic situation, okay? I may have clothing that was given to me or a nice watch. I may be in a place that is usually peopled by the rich, Okay, there are many factors which could lead you to making the wrong decision about me just because of the tone of my skin. Now, I'm part Celtic. I don't know how many variations there are in my Celtic DNA. And I'm part Mediterranean, hailing from Greece and from uh, Naples or Sicily. I don't even know at the moment. That means that there may be many different variations in the DNA in some small percentage in my makeup, from other people of white complexion. I'm also part anemic, okay? So if somebody sees my name on a resume, Ateniese, they may think, oh, he's Italian. This is an Italian guy. But if he saw me, I could talk just like this if I like. I could act in a way, because of my appearance, that would fit me into different white groups. So calling me white is about the rudest thing you could do. That's why it's rude to call black people black unless you're an artist and you're painting a picture. But if you're an artist and you just think someone is black, you're in big trouble. Because have you ever looked at black? I mean, there are shades of black and shades of brown and shades of black and brown. It's so useless, this distinction. 
That's why I can't understand the people who are shouting Black Lives Matter. They are putting themselves in a box. They're allowing people to think that they're a different race, to believe that they're a different race, and they aren't a different race. As this article here on Wikipedia points out, we're all homo sapiens of the subspecies, homo sapiens sapiens. There are no subspecies among us. We are a subspecies of the homo sapien group of hominids and humanoids. But on this planet at this time, there are no subspecies of humans, no other races. So why do we call other people other races? Because we're holding on to some ancient classification system, which is useless and causing problems. And it's why I suggested people stop using the word race. Don't be a smart ass and say, oh, it's in the dictionary and some scientists and anthropologists use it. But it's not helping. It's perpetuating ignorance about the nature of our differences and trying to make some of us the same just because we look the same at first glance. Let me give you another example of why it makes no sense to talk about races or subspecies. I have brown hair. My father has blackish brown hair. He's a brunette, right? My mother's a brunette. I have two sisters. One has blonde hair, one has red hair. My parents don't have blonde or red hair. I think my grandmother on my father's side had slightly reddish hair, but she had brown hair. My grandfather on my father's side had brown hair. My grandmother had brown hair or black hair. My grandfather had black hair. Probably their grandparents on both sides had black hair or brownish hair, brunette hair. Where did the red and yellow come from? It came from somewhere in our DNA. If my niece and nephew marry people with red hair and then they have red hair, several generations later, if most of them have red hair, some idiot could say, look, they're different from them. How did that happen? What if they marry someone darker complected? And then those children marry someone who's darker complected. And eventually, the genetic line from my great-grandparents on both sides through my sisters down to the next generation tends to be darker. Someone might say, they're a different race. It's idiotic. They're not a different race. None of us are any different than, say, a calico and a tabby cat. And the most important thing about this is these superficial differences, which aren't even consistent in different groups, have nothing to do with our behavior. Nothing. Nothing unless you do some sort of idiosyncratic study of how the height of one group or the shape of one group's pancreas or the predominance of some kind of blood type has affected that group of people and then their behavior on some slight level. For the most part, what we are talking about societally, socially, politically, is the ways in which we make decisions that affect one another, personally, interpersonally, governmentally, nationally, religiously. These things have nothing to do with biology, and therefore, the biological component of this classification system that we use called race breaks down that definition of race and only leaves the relevancy of culture, which is why we should only call one another different in cultural groups, different culturally. If, in fact, we are actually bound to our cultures. I'm not bound to mine. Anybody who knows me well knows that I don't speak Italian and I don't speak Gaelic. And although I may be white-complected, my heart is very Asian. I'm a Buddhist, not a Christian. You wouldn't catch me dead entering back into that religion. I may love the teachings of benevolence and kindness that came from Jesus, but everything else about it to me is completely flawed and causing a lot of problems. I'm a Buddhist. I prefer to take my shoes off when I enter the house. I prefer to use chopsticks. I shake hands because it's just a matter of character, but I'd actually prefer to bow. Culturally, I'm a mix of North American 20th century and ancient Asia. If I marry somebody from Korea and Japan, I'm going to have children with Greek, Italian, Celtic, East Asian, and slightly less, less East Asian, North Asian blood. Does that mean my children, because they're going to look very different from their cousins are a different race? Absolutely not. We're all the same race. We're all the same species. And we're only causing problems by using this word race because it focuses more on physical difference than on culture, which is our real problem. And the men among us, the women among us, the adults among us, PC people, are concerned with the way we behave, which is 
in large part due to the decisions we make. Whether or not you believe in free will is another issue, but we make political and social decisions. We have habits that may come from our background. Okay? We have some habits which may come from our personal health, but it has nothing to do with the shape of our lips, cheeks, ears, our height. It has nothing to do with our skin color, which is part of the word race. Take it out and all you've got is culture left. If you don't want to blame somebody for his or her culture, as you obviously can't blame me for mine, then maybe we should start talking to one another about individual behavior. Hey, neighbor, I appreciate the fact that you like to burn down your backyard every year at the Festival of the Vernal, Vernal Equinox, but it gives my daughter uh, an asthma attack. His burning down his backyard has nothing to do with his skin color or his stature or the shape of his eyes and everything to do with the decision that he makes to burn down his backyard based on his culture and his personal taste. Isn't that what we need to be talking about? In the case of Black Lives Matter, don't we need to be talking to our own people of all different backgrounds about composing a better police force? Don't we need to say to people, it doesn't matter that you're black. I don't want to get beat up or killed by police either. We should stop breaking down our differences this way because they're superficial and not helpful. Join me. Stop using the word race. If you're worried about the phenomenon of racism, call it what it is. It's ethnophobia, fear of other cultures, of other ethnicities, decisions based on that. It's a kind of xenophobia. You dilute a problem when you rename it something that's incorrect. You help solve a problem when you're accurate about what it really is. Have a great day, homo sapien.